Hi, I'm uh, Svenja Hahn. Uh, as you can see, I'm now Daniel Kadek, who was primed in the program. Um, he asked me to, to chip in. I'm a vice president of the European Liberal Forum, also vice president of our party, the ALDI, um, but I'm also uh, active uh, in the European Parliament in the International Trade Committee. And the Mercosur agreement uh, for certainly is one of the most debated trade agreements, I would say right, right after TTIP um, with the US. And um, I think it, it uh, came, it is a good example how much uh, differences we have and what a trade agreement actually contains, the expectations and the public opinion we have in regard of trade agreements. It is a trade agreement that has been negotiated for 20 years. It would have been the biggest block by block agreement. Um, it would have entre bloques y um, va a tener los mercados más grandes conectados en el huge huge potential. But what's happening now? It's uh, I would not say in the in the fridge, but uh, it's definitely in the back of the draw of uh, our cupboard. And um, we, we really need to ask ourselves why. I think we had a lot of myths and I think being a trade politician, a lot of the work you're actually doing is busting a lot of myths and misconceptions um, regarding trade. I think what is mostly outstanding um, is the matter of environmental protection. I think we all remember the, the pictures of the burning Amazon. And I think it's our jointly responsibility to combat climate change, to stop deforestation. Um, but if we actually take a look at the Mercosur trade agreement, we would actually see that there are binding commitments to the Paris Climate Accord, that there are binding measures to, to reforest uh, forests, to stop the deforestation, the illegal deforestation, uh, and quite the opposite, to actually harvest, for example, uh, Brazil nuts, which grow uh, there in the Amazon rainforest. So the question we would have to ask ourselves, why is it that we have such misconceptions that, well, such an agreement would actually, for the first time, give us the opportunity to have a say on what is happening there. Because without an agreement, uh, Brazil and Mr. Bolsonaro uh, would not have to give a second thought about our opinions. But with such a trade agreement, we would have a leverage, we would have a place on the table. Um, so I think a lot of, of the discussion will be about um, Sobre cómo podemos abordar estos convince people of the potential we have there. That was just uh, as a matter of combating climate change, which is a challenge we all have to face together. But it's also a matter of geopolitics. And we currently see it. We live in a time of autocracy versus democracy. Um, we see that in Europe, we had dependencies, for example, uh, in, in regarding to energy towards Russia, we see we have economic dependencies towards China. And um, to get out of this, we need to strengthen our trade relation. We need to diversify our trade relations with other countries. And especially in, in South America, uh, if we are not engaging with partners there, they will be searching for other partners. And China is among the first to step into this void and increasing their activity. So trade can and must play a role in the world in safeguarding human rights, in combating climate change. But we also need to address the realistic impact trade can have and what is a task for other policy areas like foreign policy. So trade has always been in the in the kind of like in between the chairs to say, because in my opinion of the lack of absence of a working EU foreign policy.